Hello everyone, I'm Alex, and welcome back to another Internet Sensation podcast. I just wanted to let you guys know, if you want to support the show and get a bonus episode every single week, then you can support us on Patreon, linked in the description below. Thank you very much, and enjoy the episode. Right, so, <laughs> hello everyone, welcome back uh, to the Internet Sensation podcast. We're in the studio! Yay. I can't believe it. Um, there's probably been about seven grand spent on this uh, in rent <laughs> since the last time we came by, but we're here. I just want to say, first of all, a huge thank you to the Patreons who support this. Um, by the time you see this episode, there will now be a Discord. Uh, anybody can join it, by the way. It's public. Um, not the Chaos Crew one. We've got that. You should join that one. But we now have an I'm Alex only one. Um, and if you're part of the Patreon, uh, you can access like exclusive voice chats and exclusive uh, like stuff for the podcast and topics and just being able to interact with me and us and whoever else joins it. Because let's face it, most people don't even use the Discord. Mm. I do. I went in there today. You know, I used the Chaos Crew Discord for two hours today. Two hours? What for? Sat in VC. With, no with, way. With, with, with the audience. Um, I'm lonely. Oh. Uh, no, I wanted to check in and see what they were doing. They're a really nice bunch of people in there. Oh. And they actually said a lot of nice things about you. Apparently, you uh, you were saying about you helped somebody with their merchandise in Germany. Oh, yeah, I did. God, that what that's made its way to the Chaos Crew Discord. Apparently, um, you know, Arthur's a man of the people. Someone brought a lovely uh, Arthur TV dot shop jumper. Do you, uh, are you selling merch? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I've had merch for a long time. It's nice. print on demand, so... Rather than having warehousing, if someone orders something, they, they make it, and it's. But it's honestly, I would be wearing it all the time if it was didn't come across as exceedingly arrogant. Do you remember when I used to do it's that? It's very soft. I used to do that all. Oh, the, yeah. I, mean, I used to like. Oh, but yours says "Internet Sensation." I think having Arthur. Does yours have your name on it? Yeah, a lot of that's it amazing. You are my biggest pet peeve on YouTube. Arthur. One says hashtag sub to Arthur TV in as well, back from the old days. There's a variety though. You can get Divi on a jumper, all that kind of stuff. So. I, I, that was why you know that's why the Internet Sensation brand started. What's that? I said YouTubers who put their name on clothing are fucking idiots. There you go. I'm part of that crowd. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will not be denying that. Sorry. I, the reason why is because Ollie, Ollie White was doing it, and it was like a little dig and. I remember the first time I met Jack, mate, and Stevie White, and I was wearing my shirt, and Stevie generally just thought I was like, I mean, he probably thought it anyway, he probably knows now, but he, he thought I was an asshole <laughs> because of the T-shirt that just had the, the big logo on it. And right. I guess when I was like 18, it's not as obvious like that I'm a zany, ironic teenager back then. <laughs> um I stopped, I've stopped wearing it now. I, I want to bring the clothing back, but as you said, like, man, I've been getting quotes for like restarting the clothing company. It's like thousands of, like tens of thousands of pounds to start again. Yeah. Um, cause I don't think I'd go for a supplier because my last supplier shut down without telling me. No way. Yeah. So RIP internet sensation for now. Yeah. It's just, it's, everybody's like, where did it go? And I was like, it's just gone, man. I want to bring it back. Like I, I, I would love to. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've had a lot of problems. Like, that was one of the things. Like um, the company that used to do my clothing that started Internet Sensation, like recently, like uh, shut down, and like it was a big thing on Twitter. Like loads of YouTubers hadn't been paid. Oh no way! Um, allegedly hadn't been paid. I'm not going to name them because I don't want to get in trouble. But like I remember at one point they threatened to sue me and George Mimulus because Why? we wanted to leave. Um, and then what ended up happening is we agreed that we just wouldn't get paid the rest of the money as long as they just let us out of our contract. Uh, um, that was like a huge thing. Have you ever had anything like that where like companies just like fucked you over on YouTube? You know what? Not on YouTube, but I've had it at the moment. So I've basically, I've, I've just moved house, right? And so mm. I've got new Wi-Fi in and it's pretty slow. It's like 74 meg a second or something. I mean, not like deathly slow, but when you're a YouTuber and you want to be uploading like 10 gig every single day, it's just so long. And I, I spoke to BT and they were like, well, all of us use open reach. So this is the max speed you're getting from anyone. So I was like, fine. I was like, just give me your fastest you can do from this like cable that runs into the house. And uh, they were like, yeah, you're obviously, you're starting a new contract. You're in a new house. So you need to sign for two years. I was like, right. Okay. So I said, fine. Literally like three, four weeks later, just after the break period had, had finished, I get a, a letter through my door being like, we're a brand new Wi-Fi company and we can give you a brand new cable and give you three gig per second. Oh my God. And it's a third of the price. 
So I ring up BT being like, right, guys, I want to leave. And they're like, okay, your leaving fee will be £1,200. I was like, you're kidding me. And I was like, there must be somewhere around this, like, you know, I pay three months of like 70 quid or whatever up front. And they're like, no, no, you either do the full two years at this 70 quid or whatever rate, or you give us 1200 quid now. I have the now. same thing with and BT, like, you man. you degenerates. They're actually the worst. Like, I mean, you know what it's like in our house. I was talking about it in the Discord server earlier. I was ranting about it. Like, I was like, it's so hard. Like, I'm posting daily now on the second channel. Mm. I was I physically, but not been able to do that without fucking up everybody else's day. Yeah. Um, and people didn't really understand. Like, that's why the podcast has been really weird and like i haven't been posting as much as i could have been and why the bonus episodes have been off and like it's just been such a shame and doing like discord stuff with other people which is currently like our bread and butter that you guys like love it's just been a nightmare trying to do it mm -hmm. because like if i if we finished the recording and i went to upload my files um or like George went to upload his files and let's say i wanted to go watch like uh the latest like mandalorian episode um no, if if he and especially before everybody wasn't crushing the quality out of their files. Mm. Um, originally, we'd be uploading twenty gigabyte files each because you know you want your friends to have the best quality video. You don't want to be the person who lets it down. Um, and I was like, it got to the point where we just started crushing the files to two gig from twenty um, because twenty gig internet in the entire house for everyone unusable, like not even like genuinely could not like if you tried to, if you clicked on disney plus it would spin around for five minutes and yeah. it would say error um i have the exact same thing what, what's the most annoying for me this is probably a very niche problem <laughs> I, I mean i'm lucky because the other two people i live with are both like tiktokers so they kind of just like upload from their cellular data. Few, yeah cellular it's all like a few megabytes so i'm the only one but like when i'm uploading all the internet is getting eaten by that and i try and play online chess <laughs> and, and because I play like Blitz and Rapid, I'll have like five seconds on my clock. I'll make a move, but it will take three seconds to send it to the server rather than be instant. So all of a sudden I play a move and then like I go from like five seconds to three seconds left and then I run out of time and lose my chess game. And I'm like, thanks a lot, BT. I had a friend <laughs> tell me a terrible story earlier. I'm not going to name them. Right. It involves two people we actually know. Oh dear. Um, I don't know if this Where's will get this back going? on this podcast. Um, <laughs> basically... One of them is a massive chess player. This and isn't me, by the way. No. <laughs> and he asked our other YouTuber mate, like, we should play a game of chess. And obviously he beat him the first three times and he was like quizzing on the moves. On the fourth game, our friend went and downloaded a Grandmaster chess bot. No way. And played five back-to-back -back flawless, <laughs> <laughs> flawless <laughs> games. Right. But it was on like, chessonline.com whatever one when we got like a score yeah um and he not and like he you knocked him down it, from yeah. like he was like he knocked 300 points off his score oh he lost ratings as well oh no <laughs> he lost 300 points off his score and he was like i don't get it like you were asking what the moves were like and now no, like, you, you, like, you have to have done something you have to be lying and then he went, oh, I forgot to mention I played when I was like a kid. That's so funny. And he was like, but I stopped playing because it's boring. <laughs> so he's just like, obviously he's not playing. Yeah. But what he did is like, he had the bot play the game, but he didn't have the bot actually play the game so he could like yeah. copy the moves copy and make it moves. Say, look like. Oh, that's so clever. I think I'd do that because I mean, I've just, I'd like to get into chess, but like it seems kind of like a, fun intellectual game but like i don't like thinking genuinely it is you know lewis just actually messaged me about a couple of minutes before we hopped on being like i've just played f my first five games of chess and i've just won by checkmate so i think lewis is going to get into it right Honestly, you're gonna have everybody on it we should do a chaos crew arthur tv teaches chaos crew chess i you know i think it's i think people would be interested in watching it actually yeah because like, people chess is just getting so big like the number of on twitch isn't it you know joke man my mate Mm -hmm. um from locked in locked dead, yeah. he was like my brother at school he was like he was like your brother was he no <laughs> that came out wrong he said to me that his brother goes to school and when everyone used to speak about fifa and call of duty it's just the last few months everyone <laughs> bashes chess and he's like road mad from the ends that's great there's just these kids running around I think, those, I think fifa from that lot it's like 
It's just got a bit boring, hasn't it? It's got stale, hasn't Especially it? Especially yeah. now that it's going to be called like EA. Oh, EAFC. EAFC. Yeah, what is that? It doesn't about? roll off the tongue. No. Want a game of EA? Want a game of EAFC? EAFC. Yeah, no. I mean, people are just going to call it FIFA anyway. Yeah, you just will call it FIFA. It's going to be the hardest rebrand ever. Yeah, no, they've they've got that massively. Yeah, like yeah. you know, I don't know what they could have called it. I mean, anything really that wasn't <laughs> fucking EAFC. Yeah, too many. Too, you know. Well, we were talking about this the other day. Who was I talking about this to? Um, talking about how the all of the like big channels and stuff have three syllable names, mm. and I've done one too many along with Arthur TV. It doesn't roll off the same. I'm time. Alex. I'm Alex. 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 Wait. Yeah. Alex Elmsley. Alex too long. Elmsley, yeah. Two is fine, four. but like Chris MD, the Side Men, Will N E, the E Boys, the E Boys. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if we. Chaos crew. I did think about Chaos that. crew. Chaos crew works. That's so crazy. that's why it's catchy though. Chaos that's crew. That's yeah, why it's stuck because people were like, I mean, it was only thing. So people were like, why is that name stuck out of all of the yeah. ones that we could have been given? And it's like three, three syllables. The Bean Brothers. Too many. Yeah. Yeah. The Bean. The Bean Bros. Yeah. But then that makes it sound like the a bean weird bros. Mario rip off. Yeah, no, it's getting. It's getting I, don't want, <laughs> I don't want to be a weird Mario rip off. But yeah, it's definitely <laughs> like. Yeah, there's a science behind stuff like that. You know, somebody's definitely been paid like to do that in business studies. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, that explains to me fair why the E Boys probably stuck. The E Boys, we, could, yeah, we that hated was, every name. Was that the was time. the one that we ended up with. The uh, a lot of the like, uh, I was you know Ethan Bazinga. Mm-hmm. He was causing me ATV. I'm a big fan of it. Rather than ATV, ATV. If you start another YouTube cinema. channel like uh, another one. Yeah, where I review all terrain vehicles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Girl throwing. <laughs> ATV. That would be too I'd, I'd love channel. to start doing videos like that. Like, you know, we'll get a dirt buggy. Oh, mate. Go around. Stuff like that would be great. We like, should just go to Dubai and just. Yeah, man. But I hate tunes. just Sticky Talk will beat me up. <laughs> I don't want that. True. And General want... G. Yeah, but that is unreal, by the way. Found you for a second. Yeah, actually, you talk about topics. Like, that hate just Sticky Talk General G thing. As I said in my video, like, I don't know how I feel about it because he is an autistic man. Yeah. Um, General G I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, he is an autistic man and a lot of it when it started was definitely like at his expense. But he has done a lot of stuff from HS Tiki Talk. Yeah, he, like he bought him loads of clothes, like been putting him up in the hotel room. Like you can't he's definitely treated him better than a lot of people treated Calvin Dragon. Oh yeah. Or treated like I don't know, who's the recent one? There's like that um that Max Verstappen uh, fan, uh, Andy Moore, I think his name is. Um, oh, isn't is he the one that's got the uh, in the house with Luke Bennett? No, oh, no. there is the house as well. Mm. Whoever's setting that up, that's fascinating. Yeah, um, it, it's a questionable thing, isn't it? Because it's almost like the um, it, it's almost got the similar sort of vibes as the Undateables, where you've got the question of like it does because obviously they have autistic people on there, and it's like. You yeah. know, when you've got, especially when it's other people with Cal the Dragon, if he's doing brand deals and getting views and making money himself, I think obviously completely fine. It's more like when you've people. got someone sitting behind the scenes going, I'm going to put three autistic people in the house, make them do TikToks, it's the and pay them a share people, of it. Yeah. You're like, hmm. yeah, it's the vulturistic people who, like, I, I think HS Tiki Talk is donating half of the money from the song to an autistic charity, which if he does do, uh, huge props to him. Can't hate on that. He, d- he did um, that video the other day ranting back to, I can't remember what that OnlyFans girl is that did a like, when I did a video with Cal the Dragon, it was bad. Astrid. But, Astrid. but when I did, but when you do a video with General G, it's fine. And he obviously clapped back and I think he was quite right when he was I like. I saw his video. Yeah. And he, and, he, and he basically was like, uh, you know, when I do it, I bring them up. You like sponge off cows sort of thing it's, well he, and general g's general, life is a million times better than what took, it was yeah, surely he took general g i didn't know who general g was before no. hst Tucky, but i knew who calvary dragon was before astrid wet yeah i didn't know who astrid wet was before calvary dragon mm. um yeah. the difference is like yeah vault, there's a big difference between being a vulture and you know and what hst Tucky has done yeah. I, I mean i still think it is at the expense of the person because they are being mass bullied and that is why the clips have been going viral. Yeah. He might not be the one doing the heavy lifting, but mm. like if I knew that bringing my mate on meant, if I knew I was going to bring somebody on and they were going to get 10,000 comments about how weird they were and they couldn't help that and they were my friend, 
I wouldn't bring them on the podcast. I wouldn't put them in a video because it would be unfair. Yeah, that's right. And I would, and I'd be like, "Hey, man, you're gonna get fuck. Like, you don't do this." And also, like for me, like I'm, I'm in this life. I've chosen this life. Yeah. They might. It's like it's a big thing to like just launch yourself into and then be like, because he's not gonna stay in Dubai with him forever. They're not yeah, gonna be. True. They're not going to hang out forever. No. And it's gonna, and that's where it gets weird. But Astrid was definitely the worst for that shit because she did it with um, she did it with Calvary Dragon, and it really rubbed me the wrong way. I find it all very weird. Yeah. Um, but you know they did seem to actually be mates at a certain point, so I was like, fair enough. Like, but it was odd. And then it was like, then I saw her hanging out at Paul Breach. Yeah. And I was like. That's oh, that's fucked oh, up. Why we spoke about this on yeah. the podcast. Well. I was like, that's just messed yeah. up. Like, there's no reason to be a bit different if like he came on here, we did an interview with him, yeah. I think, and we were like, Why are you a freak? Yeah. It's a bit different to be like, it's funny Dance. because like we're buddy buddies and we're dancing. Yeah. That's fucking odd. It can't like, be worth it. I mean, we we've spoken a couple of times now about quality of viewer, but the kind of clout you get from hanging out at Pool Breach as a friend. And like taking advantage of people like Cow is bizarre. But her grift is different, isn't it? Did you see that? What's his name? He's a big Formula One fan. Yeah, it's Andy Moore. That's what I was talking about. Maybe. And he, was, he went on live and someone was like, would you choose Astrid Wet or your parents? Yeah, and he went, and he Astrid. <laughs> and the guy goes, what? Yeah. <laughs> and, and like, but that's the thing. She forms an emotional attachment with an autistic yeah, person. Yeah, it's manipulative. And, she knows yeah, what she's and doing. Then, and then it's like, and then it's like, they obviously get attached. <laughs> and then she's like, great working with you. And it's like, yeah. it doesn't work for yeah. them. Like their lives don't they, improve at all from They the, didn't start situation. TikTok to become, they weren't like, I'm going to see this so I can get people to subscribe to my OnlyFans. They were like, he was posting innocently about Formula One. And then yeah. people mass like, shared his videos like it's, yeah so calvary dragon calvary dragon i know he said he wanted to be a premier league footballer and all of that but even so like you know he was just posting videos for a laugh yeah well he was just posting videos mm. innocently like it wasn't like it was on the same it wasn't a grift which is what it, and, and, yeah. and to take them and use them as part of your grift i mean it's weird like they're not the infinity stones they're like <laughs> people with like actual lives yeah i feel like a bit of a general G when I come on the Chaos Crew collab videos sometimes, but the other way around because it's not the com the comments are nice and then it's you guys just bullying me for yeah, being we gay are. and autistic. Yeah, we're awful. To be fair. <laughs> you get bullied for gay and autistic. Did you see that I edit that I posted on my on Twitter? I saw. The, I saw Lewis day. just replied, being like that he made it because oh, really? people have been making edits calling um, Arthur autistic, uh, which is um, fascinating that that's what you guys would choose to edit. To be honest. <laughs> Um, but I said underneath as well. I was like, you know, as long as it's not like a, as long as like, you know, another autistic person watching the TikTok doesn't feel like they're getting flack or hurt indirectly. I don't know if that makes sense, but you know, as long as it's not like a ha ha, he comes across as autistic. That's weird, and so as people who are autistic are like, oh, that's not very nice. As long as it's like a, you know, <laughs> Arthur's a bit weird, and we like him for that, then. Yeah, it's I very think different. It's fine. It? Yeah. It's a bit, it's very different. It's like, I think, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, if you actually were like autistic, I mean, you might be, who knows? We might all be. <laughs> um, wouldn't surprise me. Uh, I've definitely got something wrong with me. I'm not saying that means you've got something wrong with you, but I do. Um, then, yeah, it's obviously it's a lot different. I suppose it's the intention is what we're talking about. Like, hey, just Tiki Toki and Ashley Blair. Yeah. If the intention is to, Make four videos, never speak to them again. Yeah. It's Use them as a rung on a, on a ladder. Yeah, it's very different. Than yeah. Like, you know, yeah. It will like, be interesting to see where the general G stuff goes because once it like, once the novelty for HS Tiki Toki wears off, will he be like, I'm going to keep this guy around? Like, I'm going to be his, my, like, his friend to support him. a fascinating him. video about this, actually. Is it? There's a show in America. Um, it's made by the guy who plays the, like, the, the human character in the Sonic movie, um, which you might not have seen. I haven't seen it, but it's made by him. It's He's in it. Right. And what they do is they've got a fake jury duty set up. And the only person who's not, an, they have been one guy and everyone else is an actor. Right. So it's like, kind of like, uh, 
reality TV show, but he has no idea. Wow. Everybody. So like, and they try, Darren Brownie, and they like try and yes, life experiment, and they try and see what they can get. Him to do. Like one of them, they like, he's like, oh, do you want to get off jury duty? And he goes, yeah. And the guy goes, he says, the actor says to the guy who's not, he goes like, you, you know, they'll kick you off if you say that you're racist. <laughs> and he gets up in front of everybody and he goes, Your Honor, I'm racist. I can't do my jury duty. And the judge goes, You're not racist. You don't want to do jury duty. And he goes, Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. And then he just goes and sits, <laughs> sits back down. And A like, white guy as well. Yeah. Oh, dear. Because they're just like, they're all fucking with him, basically. Yeah. <laughs> but he formed like genuine friendships on that show with those people. And the guy who plays like the guy in Sonic. There's a bit where he like says to him, like, um, he's speaking to him and he goes, oh, do I recognize you? Because he's like a big famous actor. I mean, he's in fucking Sonic, like a massive movie. Mm. And he goes like, oh, yeah, 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 I was in the, you know, he goes, I'm I Sonic saw that Sonic. clip. Yes. So it's that show. So everybody's in on it. And he goes like, I heard that bomb. <laughs> he goes, yeah, it didn't do very well. Um, but like, he's the only one not in on it. Is but, it Ryan Reynolds or something? No, no, it's, uh, I don't know what the guy's name is. Um, it's yeah, not, who, oh yeah. no yeah it's the guy from enchanted and yes yeah he's like quite a famous tiktoker and he's a tiktok quite a famous quite a famous actor yeah he's God, quite uh, big in america uh, i wouldn't recognize his name though yeah. but um yeah he said he went on the podcast afterwards he was like so like how does it feel for that person like, how do you get them to agree to release the show if you basically made them like a fool for like and he's mm. like he's like we're so careful like we said to all the crew before we started like you know he was like as much as it was all done for a tv show and scripted and he had no idea what was going on yeah he was like we took him aside afterwards we were like we are all still your mates like every friendship that you formed on here yeah it's real it was all real to us mm. and it's you know as much as the show like you know and we got you to do some stupid stuff like and he's like and we still text and that's that's like a prime version of that he's a a-lister hollywood celebrity not like a tiktoker Making a video of like an autistic guy and then abandoning him. Like he's like still texting him about a show where he pranked him for three weeks of his life and he's still friends and like and maintain relationships because they were like because it would just be like massively fucked up <laughs> to like fuck with a guy three weeks ago. Thanks for the TV show, mate. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Um, like, you know, it definitely probably softens the blow a bit, like of being on something like that, because God knows mm. what I'd be like on a show like that. That's that's kind of what happened with the uh, Fat Families. I don't know, like you guys have obviously reacted to a few episodes. Mm. And I did more of like a commentary stuff on like how it like ruined this woman's life, and she was basically like, when you finish Fat Families, there's no aftercare at all. I mean, obviously it doesn't exist anymore, but like they'd be like, okay, you've lost all this weight. We've done this TV show. The second they click stop recording, they they left, and she was like people were making memes out of me like the show went up it was embarrassing they kept they kept in loads of stuff they said they wouldn't i got depressed i put all the weight back on and then the guy came out after and was like um the host was like oh i i used to love doing fat families but comedy is dying and she was like comedy is like how are you seeing this as a comedy show like i was morbidly obese close to death so is my mum. you you brought us on the show called us like Big tubby fat, loads of people died. Fat cow. I did a video on it the other day, like the last Fat Families episode. I'm pretty sure the bloke in it, like we upload the video, and I don't check. Like we do the episodes. I know I say something that like, fuck it out, like you know these like, you know, and then I uploaded it. First comment was like, he died two years later. Shit. And obviously I've uploaded the video like twenty, years, like fifteen years after it's out. Yeah, yeah, and I, decades. And ago. we're sat there being like, God, if he carries on, he's gonna die. Yeah, he did. And I'm like, but that was the whole thing about the show. Like one of the points I was making is I was like, they don't help anybody. And then literally the guy died like two years later from like a heart attack or something. That's fucked. And I think he had a heart issue. Right. And they're making him run for the show. Oh Lord. Oh, and like, so they made it worse. They had no idea that he had like this. Cause obviously they just want their B-roll. Oh, didn't even just check. Give so I was like, scan. yeah, mental. Like that's awful. Yeah, generally like the whole thing crazy. Like their shows are like, some of those old shows are just like horrific. Like the way that people we just get dropped off. That it's like, yeah, fuck it. it's mad. like genuinely fucking wild. Like it's mad. The, the reality TV show slog is like crazy, man. Especially like, like pre, because obviously nowadays, if someone was being treated like shit behind the scenes, they'd whip out their iPhone and secretly record it and tweet about it and Instagram about it. But back then, 
when you've got the cameras in your house and the cameras stop rolling for but the day there's no platform and they start for swearing people. at you yeah no twitter what, account no instagram what do you do yeah and you can't prove it you can't be like TikTok oh TikTok nowadays would fuck up all us i mean look at like the way like people love island like you know everything producers getting exposed all the time because people yeah. just got a podcast to, like yeah they go and that wasn't what i said and they cut that up obviously nda is trying to get people protect people so far but yeah like it's fucking wild um, staying on the TikTok thing, one of the things that I've seen recently that just like is I don't understand. It's like, have you met Alphaba? Yeah, I, I, uh, I think I did with you for the first time. Yeah, she was at George Clarkey and Max podcast. Max's thing. podcast. Yeah, thing. so I uh, met her. Um, had no idea who she was. Was that the first time you met her? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had no idea who she was. Like no idea about any of it, and like, and now there's been like, so much massive like controversy on TikTok. Like people like throwing shade at Max, saying that he was like responsible, even though he's only met her like four times, and like that's ridiculous. Uh, like Max Black Day, responsible for what? For her actions. Apparently, she like lied about having Tourette's or something, and right. lied about having an autism diagnosis, right. and like, you know. It's strange again with TikTok. I suppose it's kind of the theme for that. It's right, like you know, people being like somebody's lied about their autism diagnosis. I've watched. I w- I've now gone and watched a bunch of videos, and I'm sat there being like, "Come on, guys! Like, what the fuck? How could people be act like? You know, they're basically being like, well, we're not technically proven to have anything wrong with them, and it's like." Yeah, man, but watch the fucking, like, watch all the videos. Like, this is clearly not somebody who's stable. It's clearly not somebody mm-hmm. who's like, and yeah, they've done bad things. I'm not saying they haven't. Like, apparently they've taken money from people for stuff that they shouldn't have, and they've lied about, like, getting surgery for something, and they raised money for Oh, it. they, they, but them. I might have used the wrong. I think so. I yeah, she, so. I think. Okay. Um, but, um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's like strange that people being like, this person who we're all laughing at because they do weird things um you know uh well they don't have a diagnosis um and now we're gonna get angry at them like as if it's controversial and it's just strange because i'm like surely the tolerant these people apparently like they're being like it's a disgrace that this person is is like controversial and i'm like you guys are just mass bullying somebody who's clearly got like issues it's really fucking tiktok's hard. a real savage place for it as well because like you can create an account with almost nothing not have your face name anything tied to it and the TikTok comments can be, and when TikTok bullies you as well, like because everyone's watching the TikTok and commenting, they blow up so quickly. And I, I reckon think, if TikTok started hating you, but I think it, the thing is about it is I've been getting comments from people in our audience being like, "Bash for the next person you guys do videos on." We've all moved on from Paul Breach now, and I got like five, ten comments about that. And I was like, Paul Breach was a seedy bloke who was old enough to know better. Yeah, um, taking advantage Al- of other people. Alphabet is a young trans woman who clearly has like issues crying on tiktok live all of that stuff like i don't think there's anything that we could make funny about yeah her. what do you laugh at there yeah there's a few videos I mean, she's in my new video because the thing i was laughing at was she linked up with this chelsea lee art person who's also just like a uh, case to say the least and they um they were doing these videos. They were making TikToks in public. I took the piss out of that. I didn't. I wasn't like, oh my god, look at the. You know, she's lying about being mentally ill because number one, just because somebody doesn't have a diagnosis for something doesn't mean that they don't have a problem. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, you might have cancer, but if you haven't been told you got cancer, it doesn't mean you got less cancer. It just means you don't actually technically know yet, but you still have it until you get that diagnosis. So you like, think people are a lot harder on her, like. Or, or do you think they almost go like because you haven't got bring like that a diagnosis? To, bring that energy to Paul Breach for being yeah. a weirdo. Don't bring that energy to like young woman on TikTok. You know what I always find really weird though? Because I find this on my channel like um, I tend to obviously go like as much down the route of like be mean to people for things they can't control. <laughs> and like, you know, every, every now and then I'll make a, a like joke about Ed being a bit very nice but about like big ed being a bit short or you know yeah uh, you know but he's like such an awful person people tend to let it slide um i was like paul right like you know we probably yeah. crossed the line in places there but like you know it's justifiable but like if i did that about just like i don't know 
just at like a random it, person. It'd be harassment. Yeah, he'd be he in, would be wrong. In a court of law. I think it would be wrong. But the thing I always wonder, like, actually, to what extent can they change it? So, like, if you look at someone like Paul, like, he, yeah, of course, all right? of his, like, his choices are choices he's made. He's he's chosen to done this to do a lot of the things he does. But like to an extent, he is the way he is because of his like personality. Like he was born evidently a bit of a narcissist, a bit, you know, he's got all of these issues, but it's a big question. Like what is like is, nature and nurture yeah. and what and can people change? Because I don't think he I is hope the exact same could, as I, me and you, know, you in the head. For the love of God, I hope people could change. For my own sake as well. Like I mean I but I like there's a lot of stuff that, you know, I guess it's different. I mean, but when you're 50. Yeah. Oh, it's, I think it's too late for him. But I do just think like Have we bully him, him for being so weird, but he's not just like us mentally. I mean, even me and you oh, yeah, probably I were a not. bit. <laughs> well, I hope I'm not like. <laughs> I don't think we're that close to the normal. The no, normal we're, I'm not close to normal, but I'm not full fucking brick. No, but He's currently in a tent right now, you know. I, you, uh, you, you keep up with this because I I've been, I've started flicking past Paul Br- Paul Beach when he comes off my time. Why is he on a te- in a tent? He's he's actually like I think he's pretending to be ho- people are like he's homeless. He's homeless. He was in that bougie Japanese hotel yeah, looking he's thing. He's pretending to be homeless, and people are still feeding into it because it gets their attention. Like he's camping in a field during the day. He definitely packs it up and yeah. goes to a hotel at night. He's annoyingly, he kind of knows how to keep his name in the headlines. It's like these, I only heard about it recently, but there are loads of famous people that when their name has been out of the news and they feel like they're becoming irrelevant, get a designer to design an ugly but cool outfit and pay a paparazzi person to catch them wearing it. A lot of people pay paparazzi um, to follow them around. Really? Yeah. It's a big thing. I might cool do it next time I come here to this. Be like, people do hey, it. Arthur TV's yeah, on his way to internet sensation pod. Lot, like He's they, like, no one cares. They tell people where they're at. Yeah. Um, and the paparazzi come up and take pictures. And it's normally quite obvious to spot when somebody's done that. Yeah. Um, Like, yeah. There was that Hayley Bieber one where she was wearing a t-shirt with some text on it that went really viral. And I think the photographer revealed that he was paid to capture it. Or called. And she was getting roasted for Called by a source. Yeah. Who is one of their friends or something. Or just the management company or agency. Yeah. yeah. Like who gives them an anonymous tip that they're going to be here at a certain point doing certain things. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like... But, but, but Paul Breach is, is, he's so annoyingly good at it because he just, he always does something new where everyone's like, you know, if, if, the, if you had, if you had the, his 10th, 19 year old OnlyFans person going around, you'd be like, Okay, equally disgusting, equally as bad, but people would be less, people would speak about it less because you just get used to it. He does a, a different chapter of weird thing all the time. Yeah, he I mean, to be fair, at least with his camping one, he's far away from everyone. There's no victim in it. Yeah, he ran into somebody the other day and was speaking to them on the live. Some bloke walked past him and being like, you're doing the stretch of the coast. And then like he finishes speaking to the bloke, normal conversation. The bloke walks away and he goes, I just spoke to a bloke, guys. TikTok, I just spoke to a bloke. Oh, and I didn't like scream or cry. And it's like, wow, you, how did you make that interaction <laughs> fucking weird? What a bizarre man. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, uh, it's fascinating. It really is. Like, yeah, I just don't think they're the same. Yeah. Talk about somebody who does deserve a lot of shit, though. Um, the Dalai Lama. Oh, yeah. Have you seen this? Oh, this came up the other day. Oh, yeah. The I was Dalai gonna... Lama kissed a kid uh on on the tv uh in front of loads of people in public very odd decision he apologized um now number one he asked the kid to suck his tongue as well which did. made it worse yeah it's a bit fucking weird the kid was very lie. not did you watch the clip i've seen pictures i didn't really want to fucking watch it's it it's so uncomfortable to watch i'm the not kids going obviously to like no i don't want to kiss you and he goes like Tell my tongue. And the kid's like on his lap there. And the kid's like. Does he I, do it? I, I, I actually don't think I watched to that point. I just I felt, I felt I felt awful for the kid. You know, when you watch like another human suffer and your just empathy brain puts you in their it's position. It's like watching you in a chaos group video. I, <laughs> yeah. I just sit there and I'm, I was just like, I could picture the Dalai Lama being opposite me. And like <laughs> seven year old Arthur being asked to suck his tongue. And I wanted to cry. I don't want to dream about the Dalai Lama. And I was like, I'm not watching this anymore. I don't want to think about the Dalai Lama at all. That's not what I want in my life. Um, it's kind of sad though, because I, I kind of have a weird 
like I'm obviously don't follow him as a religious man or a, I'm not a particularly spiritual man, but have a, you know, the Dalai Lama, you kind of like to think like you have a lot of respect Mate, it's for a lot him. He's of a people big like cultural this. significant person. You were told person. as a kid that these people like almost like gods. You like, don't want to believe that they're bad people. If, if you, you said he's I mean. the Dalai Lama, I'd be like, oh, he's like that really good guy. Because yeah. that's all I've been told. Yeah. But I've never seen him do anything. never heard about anything he's done. I'm just told that he's like, oh, yeah. True. But like my mate Lewis Spears did a joke about the Dalai Lama a couple of weeks ago. Um, and he's currently, he literally just called me before we did this podcast. He just did a show in Australia, a comedy show, stand-up show, protested by 200 um, Buddhist monks. Wow. Um, because of his joke he made about the Dalai Lama. Yeah, see, I mean, he's a, he's a, that's, that's blasphemous almost speaking against him. That but now. he apologized, so he agreed. What was the joke? How bad was the I joke? I don't know what the joke was. Um, I can't remember it verbatim. Go watch it on Lewis Spears stuff if you want to go find it. It's on his YouTube channel on his Instagram. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find it quite easily by searching it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> there's so many news articles about it. Oh, but Lord. yeah, like, he turned up to his show, like, police were like, by the way, there's like 200 people outside. They were chanting, Lewis Spears isn't funny for like two hours. <laughs> Apparently, they That's like, probably the nicest... Like, most light-hearted chant anyone has well, ever they're Buddhist, been. so you'd fucking hope so. Yeah. Um, it's quite ironic that, like... I said to him, like, it's so funny that he's managed to piss off Buddhists. <laughs> they're, like, the most peaceful people. <laughs> but, like, mentally, he's, apparently he's been getting death threats from Buddhists. Crikey. That doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah, that's bizarre. And he's been getting death threats from, bu- death threats from Buddhists. I mean, I'm going to have to listen to the made. joke now, because, like, you know... It's, it's not so bad. Hard to it's judge. not bad. Because I, I, it's, I, I like, it's, it's a joke about kissing the kid, right? It's not like, but like, fuck, he, it's not like fuck Buddhist. He's okay, not, he's not yeah. like that. It's like, it's literally just, it, uh, from what I can tell. Remember, it's a super harmless joke. It might be a bit edgy and offensive, but it's a joke about like, and about something that's actually bad. By the way, I think if you're more angry at a comedian for making a joke than the Dalai Lama, yeah, then your priorities are like massively skewed. I, I kind direction. of get it. Yeah, I kind of get the. I don't know. It is, it is such a tough one. I always find it like it's 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 harder for us, I guess, as non-religious people to like empathize with someone who takes offense to their religion being slandered or they're like holy people. I take offense to stuff all the time, yeah. a human being. You do? Yeah, of course. People could do loads of stuff that upsets me, but yeah. I don't go around fucking no, that's protesting true. or giving them death threats, do I? Yeah. Like, you know. I just want. I it's want the to... same thing with football clubs for me. Like when people are like, "I'm gonna fucking kill you over that football club." I'm like, "Yeah, why are you so blindly devoted?" Saying it is weird, isn't it? I watched a, an interesting documentary recently about um, talking about how like humans just are naturally very tribalistic. Like, obviously, we just evolved that way over the like past the couple crew. of million years. Like, it, they were basically speaking of <laughs> like the chaos crew, just saying like how like throughout the past few million years, if you think you know, something might be right, but something, it goes against the group's belief. You're much safer and much more likely to like survive to have kids if you just join the group anyway. So you're much more likely to like survive and pass on your genes if you're someone who goes like, I'm going to stick with my tribe no matter what. And that takes priority over perhaps, Peer pressure and stuff's like a yeah. real fucking thing. And like, yeah. I mean, and people are acceptable to what the group think. Mm. Like you say it a lot. In many ways, like I've seen, I've seen a lot of stuff where I've gone, wow, that thing is just happening because like the four people closest decided that they weren't going to do anything about it. And now it's six and now it's eight and now it's 12. And now everybody's aware of this weird thing, but it's like, well, all 20 people I've spoken to, I don't do anything about it. And I'm not going to be the person like, why would I break that? So it's like quite strange. Like there's a lot of stuff like that where, you know, you see scenarios like that like people don't want to be the outlier it is weird how much power there is in groups as well like us like us six could all get together or us five and be like arthur hill who's like the nicest guy ever like the most wholesome sweet he's actually a murderer we (laughs) we could all just do a commentary video being like behind the scenes he's an awful person slurs treats us like crap all this kind of stuff steals all our money murders people and that would be it. It would be so hard for Arthur to recover. Poor Arthur. It's like you've got something out for him. You want to get no, rid of him. No, I the picked on Arthur. him because he's literally like the nicest, most yeah. unproblematic. No, whereas if it was me, it would be believable. Yeah, I feel, I feel like 
me Lewis can come up with probably the edgiest jokes. Yeah, Clarky's kind of like he's safe. So well, actually, Clarky can. Clarky he can, sometimes he's quite a dad jokes kind of guy. He's sort of like a witty play on words pun. Sometimes in like the videos we've done, he says something, and I'm like, wow, he's got yeah. like a, he's got a dark side. There, there was a, a comment in the last Milf Manor video that I thought was 100 percent going to be get edit, edited out. And wait, and, what was it? And it was when that the young guy had basically written like. Um, it was a pleasure coming in, like coming in the show with you, whatever. And I said something like, it was a pleasure coming in this elderly pussy <laughs> or something like jokingly finishing Jesus off. Christ. It got kept in and the number of, it got clipped and someone replied to my latest tweet. And I'm like, my <laughs> siblings, my dad, I think my mum will all follow me there. And if any of them see that. I There's just, a lot of stuff in Chaos Crew videos where I'm like, I hope like five of those jokes don't make it in. And yeah. Like, and I'm like, five is too many though, because like people are leaving for time. And context, and yeah. Like, and so I'm like, one of the five is going to make it, but I don't want any of the five. Yeah, gonna. the number of times. I mean, I feel like with the Melf Manor ones, he just leaves everything in because there was that. They're quite a lot short. I think. I think the person who's worse at probably my he's my ones are the longest. Yeah, I turned our property video from like an hour and a half to like nine minutes. I can't believe you did that, by the way. That was such a crap video at the time, and it actually ended up being quite. It good. was fine. It could have. I been really fun. enjoyed it. it. Been Twenty minutes long. Yeah. But it you, was just very fast paced. Like it was literally like property joke, joke, joke. Yeah. I, I did it enjoy was, it. People liked it though. Yeah, people loved it. You know, that's the highest retention I've ever had on a video at 75% on 70 On a views. nine minute video? Nine minute v video. It's like six and a half minutes long, 75% retention. And the views are just like that. Graph upwards. Maybe you've cracked the code. Maybe, Maybe. I'm doing it wrong. I like to go for long videos, get 40% retention. But then you, you get a lot 40%. more money per view. I do. I make fuck loads of money. <laughs> for 100k views on that video, I think I'm on like a five quid CPM, whereas I reckon if it was a 25 minute video, it'd probably be getting at least 10. Yeah, you get way more money, guys. And that's what mm. we care about. We care about the money. Yeah, the, the viewers, I'm sure, are enthralled at this let's, CPM talk. Let's go through what the Patreons, Sorry about that. Um, the Patreons have been asking. Um, I said that we were both doing the podcast, so thank you everybody on Patreon. I'll read out your name and I'll read out your question. Shout out Patreon guys. Camsy Cakes said, "Huh? Camsy Cakes? That's her name." Oh, um, what was the topic? Are you ready? No, Camsy Cakes said, "What is your favorite and least favorite video you've made?" Oh, you can go first. My favorite video is the Come Die Movie one that I I, I might have even spoken about this before, but it's the one where the guy goes, "You want Jane?" Like, you've ruined my night. Oh, I thought you meant there's like one you've done with Chip or whatever. No, no, no. The, the Come Down With Me video where it was like, I looked to that episode where Peter goes on that rant being like, dear Lord, what a sad little life, Jane. Yeah. And looked at it. And in the episode, if you pick up on all these things, Jane is actually the evil one. Ruins it. When he goes like, you ruined my night so you can have the money. She actually did. And I just broke it down in this. Like, and now like the other day I was just searching Reddit and I found someone had posted about it. And all the comments were just really sweet. Like it, I took about three weeks to write that script. Like I wrote it like wow. an English essay. Like I cracked the th thesaurus out. Like it was a proper like English literature oh, analysis. Actually, did you go into detail in those videos? I was like making references to like Star Wars, um, the fall of Rome. You know, I was literally, I, I wrote it like an English essay. And I think if I show people a video, I'm like, that's the one where I, I like feel proudest about. I mean, if I was to show somebody a video, it'd be one of four from the E-Boys channel. Nice. Um, probably green screens, I think. Um, uh, or the the Christmas video, I think. Um, it's wholesome. On my channel, on the I'm Alex channel, it would be probably like either like the first Paul Breach video I did with George. Um, to be honest, probably that, actually. I really enjoyed that video. It was just super casual. We filmed it in here. It was just super chill and relaxed and like it was easy. And I like videos. I like the videos where they required no effort to make. Because mm. that for me is what YouTube is and should it's be. That's exactly why I started the Arthur TV Reacts channel. I started exactly what I'm doing on the second channel right now, yeah. the Alex Elmsley channel. So What's your least that, favorite video? My though? least favorite video that I made. Well, not, uh, probably Drunk Goggles video. Drunk Goggles. Oh, the vloggy one. Yeah. It just like. I didn't want to make it. I I was trying to fit into like what I thought the new meta was, and I was just like mega depressed. It wasn't and, about like, you. Yeah. The video just like really sucked, and I hated every minute of it. And it took months to film, and I was in a weird stage then. Mm. And um, yeah, I just like I don't like looking at it. Cause it's just not me. 
So I think, what do? Yeah, I think my least favorite one was, I don't think I've ever not enjoyed one. One that was really tough was when I did that random true crime one, like looking at this like true crime murder and interrogation. That was a long one. But I think the first one I ever made, I didn't have, I, had, I didn't even buy a mic. I was just like, I wanted to start YouTube. So I used text to speech which back in the day, like three years ago, was crap. Like AI these days can make it sound like it's someone's actually speaking you here. You use that John Pork voice. My, <laughs> my first ever video is just like a compilation of airline freakouts with a voice going like, next up, a person comes into the, like the old meme, like Texas speech voice. And it's just awful. That's hilarious. It's one of my That's most hilarious. viewed videos That's of all started. time. That's, yeah. It mental. took me like a day to make and it got like 4 mil views and I'm now looking at it like, you know. It makes you think like, was that, is, that, is there more money in there? I know. Maybe I should stop speaking in mine and just start but texting speaking That's the everything. whole Mr. Beast thing in it about like, get rid of the person. And but then you're not growing a YouTube channel. You'll get big view videos occasionally, but you're not going to mm. get consistent views. Yeah. The only way people are going to come back is if they want to watch you. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to lose half a million people potentially, but what do you, is your channel about you or is it about the airline stuff? Yeah, exactly. Like, that's the, you know, that's the big difference. Yeah. Um, um, what was another question? Um, I'm coming in with some would you rather's from Paul Bell. <laughs> would you rather always be 10 minutes late or always be 20 minutes early? Oh, I'm always 10 minutes late. I would much rather be 20 minutes early. The peace of mind I'd get. I'd much rather be 20 minutes early. I hate the anxiety of being all, late. I am always late. I'm always a little bit late. Everything always just takes a little bit longer than you think. Like, oh, I'm going to go grab my jacket, coat, phone. It's going to take three minutes. So I'll set off in. Yeah, I just, under, I just like, there's, there's very few things that I'm always on time for. Um, mm. Like, uh, yeah, 20 minutes early. And and the reason why would just purely be because of the fact that you don't annoy anybody if you're early. Yeah. Really. It's disrespectful to other people as well as being late. And I'm always like, I wish I didn't do this. I always do it. And I'm like, even here, I think today I was a good five, ten minutes late. Not that bad, but I was just like... My thing is I always intentionally want to turn up to something. Like, somebody be like, we're doing this at 9 p.m. Okay, mm. I'll be there. And then it gets like half eight, and I'll be like, I still haven't fucking recorded that main channel video oh, because Lord. I've been doing this, 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 and this. Yeah. And I'm like, and I had to do that. Like, you know, even with today with the podcast, I've got like three things due today, but like this was locked in, and I wasn't going to push this back. But now those things aren't going to happen, and those were all due today. So it's like... Yeah, I'm not great with stuff like that. Um, the next one was, would you rather have a pause or a rewind button in your life? Rewind. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. Pause is pointless. Pause, it's, it's just going to happen anyway. It'd be nice to have a break sometimes, but yeah, rewind. Oh, rewind. going back. You know what I always think? This is a fancy I have all the time. Fancy is a strong word. Yeah. But... I, I would love to have that. And all I would do is become the greatest striker of all time because I wouldn't, you know, you'd get all the money and all the fate, like everything you could possibly want. But also just being like, I was the greatest goal scorer that I ever lived. And just like every single time the ball lands at your feet, you shoot. If you miss, you rewind it until every single time you win the I'm whole, there for like Man the United. Like Champions League, yeah. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're banging in three, four goals for fun. And no human can ever recreate that. That's Because you, you just can't be, do that. You'd be, a, you'd be an icon. You'd go down in history. Like Messi and Ronaldo just wouldn't even be anywhere near your Maybe level. Maybe that's like. what they do though. Maybe that's what they are doing. Maybe. Who knows, man? Now, nah, Ronaldo missed too many sitters for us in the last season that's before true. he got sacked off to me. So Messi is, uh, is uh, just, he's a god though. He did win the, tr the World Cup though, Messi. So I feel like if I was going to do it, that's what I do. Clutch Take him last a while minute. though. Yeah, true. Um, all right, what else we got here? What else we got? Um, any weird things you were scared of as kids or strange dreams that you've had? I've had mm. some weird dreams recently. I keep having dreams that, like, I'm in a supermarket so, and then <laughs> I wake weird. up and I think I've bought stuff and I haven't. No. That happens quite a lot where I have, like, a really vivid dream that, like, when I bought, like, a Lego set and I wake up the next day and I'm like, where is it? And I'm like, that didn't happen. Well, uh, you, you know what? Who was I? I think I was talking to Chris about this recently and he had the same thing. You know, did you ever play Nazi zombies when you were younger? Yes. I always have a dream. I always have dreams where zombies start coming at me and I know I'm in the Nazi zombies world where like, even if I kill the five zombies in this room, 
six are going to come and it's they're getting harder to kill. Round. And then, and, and all of a sudden I get this daunting feeling that like, there's nothing I can do because eventually I'm going to be overwhelmed by them. There's no winning there or killing them all. For that. There's an ending to it all. There's definitely something. And Chris said he gets the exact same thing. There's definitely something to do mentally to do that. I get certain dreams when I'm in certain mental places. Really? Yeah. Like Maybe dreams. I feel like there's an impending doom. It, there'll be a genuine reason why. Being a YouTuber kind of has that effect. Yeah. Um, uh, what else we got? Um, Arthur, do you have any fun facts about elephants, red pandas, or sloths? Um, Good question. Does interesting. He? Yeah, actually, I, I read one recently about elephants, and they uh, they have a gene in them that means that they're so Levi's. so so the huh nothing. <laughs> so the the bigger the bigger you are, the more likely you are to have cancer. Right? It's just a fact. Fucking like, elephants are fucked, then. So obviously, me and you have much less chance of getting cancer. Than someone like don't so don't say don't say don't yet we don't know we don't, might as I said earlier we're not diagnosed so how could we know but then someone bigger anyway the, the point is that the bigger you are the more cells you have so naturally the chances that something's going to go wrong with those cells Spears, is much higher you know exactly he, you know his chance of having cancer th there's a stat about it Cheery. that I don't know where it's like every inch you grow you've got like a five percent increased chance of cancer and elephants obviously are massive. But they've evolved a gene that essentially scans their cells better for cancer. So they actually have something like one four hundredth of the chance of getting cancer than we do. So they've evolved a much better... Bloody elephants, man, not getting cancer. Which is crazy. But, but, but that's great news because for us, we can go, oh, these elephants have this thing in their DNA that means that they're way less likely to get cancer. That's the thing that kills most of us in you know, the advanced Western world where we've got medicine that can keep us alive for a while. We're not that good at defeating cancer. No, but not. we can, obviously with gene splicing and gene editing and gene therapy, one day be able to take that gene from the elephants, put them in, put it in our own genome and hopefully like almost eradicate cancer because hardly any of us will die. That's anymore. actually mental that elephants might be able to cure cancer. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. So there uh, you go. Uh, Emma said, I'm moving to London in two months from Sydney. Any tips or tricks? Um... Avoid the underground at night. Mm. Avoid East London in general. Um, don't go anywhere alone. Wait, moving from where? Australia to London. Oh, sunny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, I don't know. Don't download delivery or Uber Eats on your phone if you like having money. <laughs> that would <laughs> be my help. suggestion. Anything that would be a bit of a cultural shock. Uh, some of it's a shithole. Yeah. The, the, the funny thing about London is like, even if you grow up here, Everywhere else in London is a culture shock. Like it's so you can, different. You it's can go to one place and it's very Fulham Road. Like I, I, I was, I, I used to live in North Sloan London Square. where it was very out, like um, Algerian, and that was why I started learning Arabic. Because literally, I was like, everyone here speaks Arabic. Genuinely. I want to get involved. Yeah, so I started learning Arabic. <laughs> get involved. <laughs> I can now, if something's written in Arabic, I can read the Arabic and I can say the words out loud. I just have no idea what the majority of them mean. But learning the alphabet took freaking ages, and then you can go. Like half a mile up the road and all of a sudden you, you're, you're in a Greek district and then, you know, another half a mile up the road and like you can, you feel like you're bouncing across the world. So like there is no amount of time you can spend in London where you don't feel like parts of it are going to be a culture shock, which if you're open to other cultures is a great thing. Wow. Yeah. I'm never learning Arabic. I can't be bothered. <laughs> Favorite hobbies. Did you go to uni? No, I didn't. Did you? Yeah, I went to uni. Yeah, I went to Durham. You're an, yeah, I study law. Yeah, you're an yeah. educated man. I'm not an educated man. Yeah. Um, if I was going to go, I was going to go to uni that I was going to do media, so I would have still been uneducated. Um, <laughs> oh, so you, I mean, you basically picked up probably the majority of the skills anyway. That's why I stopped going. I didn't go. I was. I pleaded with my parents. I was like, I already know everything I need to know. Please let me just go do my job. Because no. I was already a YouTuber at that point. I was like, oh. I was like, don't stop me. I was like, I should be able to go all in on this instead of like, 30% carry on doing my job, but at 30% efficiency. Yeah. Because I just come off the back of like a huge, like that break at college where you had like three months where you didn't do anything. And I oh, spent yeah. every day, 14 hours a day, Fashion YouTube. on Discord making YouTube videos with yeah. like other YouTubers. And the idea of then having like even four or five hours taken out of my day mm. and then coursework, I was like, I'll never be able to, like, YouTube isn't, you know, YouTube is like, Especially when you don't know anything about it. Like when I was 17, I was like, yeah. I need to be like, 
in this game every day, every hour. That was why I stopped being a lawyer because like, I, I, I was fine doing YouTube whilst I was doing my like legal practice course and I like passed my exams and stuff and then I had the summer where I hit 100 subscribe 100k subs and I was like okay well I've got two years to qualify as a lawyer like working as a lawyer two years and then I qualify and I'll see where YouTube's at I got six months into my first seat out of four and I was just like I was uploading one video a month like my channel was dying like I was going into the office first thing in the morning leaving at 11 12 p.m every night getting home getting sub eight hours sleep just sleeping all weekend and i was like this just isn't worth it and all of a sudden at the time i was earning more as a youtuber than i was as a lawyer so i was like i remember this whole thing why do i not just quit i remember when you were like debating it it was tough because obviously like i'd worked so many years studying law to be like i'm going to be a lawyer in that world everyone has a lot of respect for lawyers and very little respect you for youtubers marry about it yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he definitely spoke because he about he went to UCL, so he was another like one where I was you like, were both "You're an educated about man," time. and he was like, "I think his dad was had basically told him like, you know, you're at UCL, you'll be on 100k a year soon enough," and he was like, "I don't think you realize how easy that is to do on YouTube," and um, well, people people didn't understand it. Like, I, I think it was like, you know, I was a trainee, it's also a lifestyle. Yeah, and and my my salary was gonna like do a three x after two years because when you qualify you go from earning. Yeah, like, you were like for sure like yeah. It was weird with you because like everybody's like you might get a hundred k a year job. It's was like and yeah. The only other person I know who had the same thing as you was Fraser who had a guaranteed job. Yeah, like, that. like I I was nailed on a hundred percent to be earning like hundred and twenty hundred. Fraser was nailed on I think for like something like seventy eight yard I think yeah. from what he told me and like doing his computer stuff. Yeah, and then. I remember saying to him, like, I was like, bro, like, your YouTube channel is going to do, like... Yeah. You're going to do bits, mate. I was like, so, I was like, tell everybody in your life to fuck off and just... It, it was a tough that. thing, so I was like, I what, like, you know, when, when my, when, like, people were sitting there going, like, this is so dumb, like, what are you doing? Like, you're going to make this, like, you know, you, you know, this is how much you can make as a lawyer. Like, just being, like, it, you, you don't want to come, you come across as such a dick if you just go, like... Oh, no, like, do you know I, how much I was, I, I was like, I was bad. Like, if anybody tried to have a conversation with me, I mean, like, not like I'd sit there and go, oh, no, I'm going to be a YouTuber. I'd be like, don't talk to me, generally. I'd be like, don't, I'd be like, don't. Like, and like, instantly go into, like, super ultra, like, mm. like, almost like, uh, like, a, like, somebody who's on, like, crack cocaine, like, crack it <laughs> defensive. Like, my, pa I remember my parents trying to talk to me about it in the middle of a car park and I like mm. threw like a massive fit because for me like there was no other option yeah it was like YouTube or I die I was like there's I was like, I'm not working a job I was like it's this or nothing I was like it's the only thing I've had my mind on for six years yeah like so for me like I was doing my media thing I was doing my media because it was like it's like Wanting to be a footballer and then settling for being a rugby player. You see, we're like, uh, footballers go to be cricket players. Gareth Bale. Yeah. Like, well, he's a bit different. With his golf. He, was, he was very good at football. Yeah. Uh, he did make a big career off that. But I had friends who were playing in academies and then went professional in other sports when oh, they wanted like to be that you mean. Oh, they, and, and I'm like, yeah, like, you're not, that's not what you wanted to be doing. Mm. like and that was for me i was like i i was like in my head especially at that point especially when it started when the when i was like on forty thousand subscribers and people being like i don't think it's gonna work i was like could it like if you would said that to me two years ago when i had 500 subscribers fair enough i was like but don't you dare try and get me out of this when i've just gained like thirty thousand subscribers in the last 30 days yeah i was like this is the worst time to try and like, because now it went from crushing a dream to people just literally, I think that when they started seeing it picking up, it was like, they were like, must stop him. Yeah. And it went, it was a bit different when people go, it's not going to work. And you're sat there with no proof of work. But when I had that like month under my belt where I think I'd made like two grand, I was like, nobody can ever tell me ever now that there wasn't a chance. Mm. That was the main thing. That was all I needed. I just needed proof that I could do it. I might have never recreated that month ever again. And I might have never have gone on to do that. Um, but like at that time, I was like, when I got that first a million view month where I cracked that 
that magic, the millions and magic number back then. Like in a million view month, it's what, like a 10 million view month is now. Yeah. When I cracked that a million view month, I was like, well, at least I know that it's not because I'm unwatchable. Because mm. before I was uploading YouTube videos, getting 500 views, and I was like, I'm not a YouTuber. You know, in the same way that when I go play football, I don't finish a game at Shoreditch and go, oh, God damn it, I'll never be a Premier League footballer. Yeah. I've accepted that. But if I'd been suddenly got scouted by Man United and they gave me four weeks of trials and then they dropped me, I'd go, I don't think I'd be able to live after that because I generally would be like, they saw something. Yeah. And that would be harder to live with for me. And that was the thing that I remember saying to people. I was like, can't stop me now when there's a chance. I was like, you should have stopped me when there was, when I, when I also believed there was no chance. Yeah. But to do that now, after I've had like 30 days of like basically living my dream and then to be like, might not last any longer than this. You should do something else. I was like, that's just like, that's actually just, but it's actually really unfair. It reminds me a little bit of the thing people talk about in the Olympics, like the, there's like, so was it like silver medal depression where like people who get a bronze are absolutely buzzing because they've got a medal. They, they've taken over the country. People who have silver, like their happiness is, a fraction because they're like, I was so close to a gold. One person was standing in my way to winning the whole thing. And then obviously the happiness is back up with gold. So it's literally like bronze, silver, gold in terms of happiness. And it's such a like, being closer is almost more painful. Yeah. In some like, ways. That was the thing. Like if I did, if, if I did quit at one point, yeah, like I think I was getting like 2000 views a video and I was like, ah, uh, like it's something like especially back then 2000 views was a lot back then mm. but um i was like i know that fifa isn't gonna be last much longer yeah and i knew it was coming to an end yeah. I and mean, there hasn't been really any fifa apart from danny aarons oh, yeah. Aaron's kills it. he's the only one yeah he, and he excels yeah but i was like yeah there's um there's no future in this so i quit for a whole year didn't make any videos for a year yeah and then i came back and then I was like, I can't remember necessarily why I came back, but I remember I just did. I guess probably out of pure boredom. Um, and I came back with like, and then I was back, I was doing like 10,000 new videos in like two weeks. And then I was like, and that was when people most wanted me to quit, was when I was at my highest I'd ever been. And that was really strange. Yeah. Um, I think it's because also people can't bear the idea of seeing somebody really go for sight and it actually works for them because it makes them think, why did I never apply myself to what I wanted to do? I mean, it can be. So do you say to everyone listening at home, like just if, you, if you're wanting to do something, just go for it, give it a try. If you give it a proper go, like you have to be honest with yourself. There were so many years where I was making YouTube videos where I was not trying. Mm. And I would sit there and I go, I try so hard. I try so hard for my FIFA streams. If you look back, I streamed an hour a day, three times a week. Mm. Um, trying would be getting home from school, doing six hours. Yeah. Um, and even then there's a lot of different elements that go into like what you're doing. It depends. Like music's another thing. Like, you know, I sit there and like, I can't play my guitar, but I don't practice my guitar, you know? So I can't really sit there and be like, I can't believe I'm not a musician. I don't do anything to become one. So, but also like, you know, time, you know, the thing is, for it is like, there's a reason why everybody gets funneled into a job at 18 because you don't want to be. 24 and like still chasing a dream yeah like because by the time you've realized your dream is fucked you might be 30 and then you've got to try to pick up where everybody else has been for like 12 years and you will just feel like you've you know but i guess yeah. it depends like it's a changing world these days though to be fair like the number of people who are probably like sometimes i'll see like a someone bang on youtube or tiktok and their account's like less than a year old and they are like 50 so i feel like with the social media age as well with the algorithm like now's a better time than ever to start like, no matter how old you are like you know if you're good enough if you're good enough yeah i've like, always the said like will reward you no matter what it's just about it's just about full breach you know yeah he's a nobody he's 39 now in his 40s it's all about applying yourself i have this conversation with with somebody probably every day where we said where i always say like so and we were talking about the other day we we're actually friends of ours uh, me and Lewis actually, and we were like, "Yeah, we just find somebody you know they're gonna make it, 
And I'm like, yeah. I was like, I always find people all the time where I'm like, they're a better YouTuber than me. And then I'm like, but they'll never work anywhere near as hard. And I was like, and that's like, I run into people all the time where I'm like, he's so much funnier, so much better. He will never upload as many videos as I do. And he will never be as relentless as I am. And he's never going to spend as much time working on thumbnails or sat there like looking for ideas or doing stuff like that. And I was like, and that at the end of the day, that'll be the difference maker. It won't be like, he can be funny all he wants. And I was like, but he'll only ever get to 200,000 subscribers because if you don't have the drive, you know, to, to be successful, then you can get successful without the drive because you're good. Mm. But being good only takes you so far. Yeah. It's, like it's the such whole, a big thing in football as well, isn't it's it? It's a massive like, thing in football. Look like at Deli Alley. Yeah, Deli Alley. Deli Alley is a prime example of somebody Randall who had, Morrison. Yeah. Like all of these people who like, they're constantly players all the time who, you know, they're great and they're really good. And they didn't like, I mean, go Eden Hazard, like unbelievable footballer. One of the yeah. best I've ever, one of the best footballers I've ever seen play football. Bloke apparently refuses to train. Yeah. Like doesn't even do up his laces when he does train. Is just gaming all the time. Eats like shit. It's crazy. Same with Bale. Like, you know, his talent was insane. And no doubt he worked pretty hard. Like, well, not the same as Hazard, but just wasn't that in interested in football. Hazard's like, a prime example because Hazard like generally is like, yeah, I just don't care. And he has his generational um, talent. Like. And he's a generational talent, but it makes you think like, where would he be if he was like... If he had Ren Ronaldo's mentality, he probably could be up there with him. Ronaldo's the prime example for me of like, as much as I hate the bloke, um, the, the mindset is, you know, it's fucking ridiculous. Like the guy is just... Uh, generally like a mentality machine mm. but that's why now you're seeing it he's got he had issues in his life but now that he's mentally not all kind of there his performances like have dropped off massively mm. um like because it is a lot of it is like self-belief self-confidence and also just like working every day doing all that stuff it's like it must be so hard for him being in that kind of position like obviously applies to a lot of other things but being like no matter how hard I try now that I'm older or now that whatever it is, like I'm always going to be held back by this. And it must be That's like, one of the I'm not surprised it's affected his mentality. Cause he's always been like, I'm the best because I work the hardest. And now he's like, I still work the hardest, but I'm no longer the best. It's a big thing with me recently is that I don't want to be one of the people who looks back at it and goes, I had so much opportunity when I was younger and had natural advantages, like maybe being better like being younger is an advantage mm. i don't want to look back at 28 and be like why have i only started daily posting youtube videos at 28 yeah why didn't i do that when i was i mean even now at 24 i was like had a conversation with lewis spears before i came on here we talked about his dalai lama thing we were talking about my channel and i was like i look at the fact that everybody started their second channel like four years ago and i think why the fuck did i not do that yeah. what's wrong with me like you know but that's like you know mentality is a big thing and in, in a lot in anything that is like based off of skill or talent mentality is trumps both like you know you know i mean one of the my favorite state things ever was that there was this golfer and somebody was interviewing him my dad always tells me this story and he's like um the guy got the interview goes up to him and goes why are you so lucky and the guy went, it's really funny. Like, the more I practice, the luckier I get. Because <laughs> obviously it's like, he's just, he's, that's what he does. Like, yeah. He practices it every day. He's not lucky. Yeah. He's not hitting the ball and it's randomly going in. Yeah. <laughs> like, he spends every day doing that. Yeah. Like, that's what he literally does for a job. And that's the thing I was thinking, like, you know, I've always said to people, the one way you can learn about doing YouTube to all my friends, I'm like, the only way you could learn is by... I always say, the one thing I would say that separates me between most people I know with YouTube stuff, I have posted 400 more videos. Um, I remember the biggest thing for me on YouTube, my biggest learning curve I've ever had, where there's been like a, like a, where I've gone from like to there, and it only has ever happened once. Now I make slight, I learn little things. The only time it's one big is I used to upload a video once every two weeks. And I get 2,000 views a video. And then I posted five in a week. And that week was the first week where I gained 10,000 subscribers. Damn. 
And I was like, and what the reason the why is, averaging? Um, the videos went from the first video uploaded got 1,000 views. The second one got 5K. The third one got 50. Damn. The reason why is because I uploaded the first one and I went 2K views, that's not great. I should tweak something. I uploaded the second one. I went 5K views, that's better. I should tweak something again. And then the third one, 50K views. And then I got complacent and I got 50K views for about six months. Because I was like, that's way more than I expected. And I just kept on doing that. And I just did that over and over and over again. And I was like, when I got to a point after about six months where I went, I wonder if the channel could get 100k views a video. So I tweaked something again. And But the only reason why I learned that is because I posted more. Because what would happen is when I posted one video every two weeks, I'd upload a video. Two weeks later, I'd come back. I'd just do the same thing I did two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't learn anything. Yeah. Whereas when I was in the moment being like, Post a video, post like I'm doing it right now. Like I uploaded a couple of Roblox videos, they did really badly. So I sat and uploaded a video the next day after I got a ten in ten. One in ten. I'm telling you, if I'd have waited a week, it would have just been another ten in ten. Yeah. But because I like instantly took that and I went, I'm going to fix this today, read everything, was like I like that's okay, those what I think is wrong with it, tweaked it the next day, and I was like, Wow, isn't that mental? So now I'm just like posting every day because that's the only way that I actually can like properly learn. So it's all about doing stuff. Like if you want to ever do anything like in general, like, you know, if you're wondering why you, maybe you want to be a comedian, it's not successful, do as many shows as possible until people start to laugh. Remember why people start to laugh, log it. If you're doing music, like, you know, make as many songs as possible until you find one that somebody likes. Um, and then do more of that. That's like the best thing you could do because thinking that you're just going to come up with your best piece of work mm. just randomly, that's like mental. Like, Yeah, every few videos I realize, like if I look back even three or six months, I'm like, my videos were nowhere near as good as they are now. And like, you know, it does just take time. Like, yeah, the more, the more you practice something, the better you get. It's the classic 10,000 hours cliche, like, Spend 10,000 hours doing anything, you're going to be pretty good I at it. I can't remember I was talking to. I can't remember if it was somebody we know or if it was like my dad or something. But I was talking about it and he was like, it might be, I think it was somebody we know actually, which is weird because this is like really oddly profound. It was like a professor who said like, half the class is going to take 10 perfect pictures, but you can only take 10. You cannot take more than 10. Um, and the other one, half of the class is going to take 100. Um, and then we'll pick the 10 best ones out of the 100. And um, the people who took the best pictures were the ones who took 100. No way. And I've always thought that's a decent approach because I'd like to be a perfectionist. I'd like to have to take a month off to make one video and be like, it's the best thing ever. But I'd be better off making four videos and then one of them being close to that mm. and the other three being okay. That's literally why I split my channel because like, I think the way I mentally, like I want, like my commentary videos to be like perfect, you know, I script every second, love like tweaking every frame. But like, I do want to just be able to be like, if it's just me and a camera and I'm just browsing a subreddit and I'm just chilling and having a good time, I want to be able to upload it without yeah. being like, well, being like there's so much pressure this has to yeah. do as well as something I spent a week scripting and all that kind of stuff. That's on. why I love the podcast. I love doing the second channel stuff because it's just like, I can just free flow. And then yeah. I just, and I'm just like, and then I just hit end and I don't cut anything out. I don't do anything. I just say like, post it. And, yeah. I'm just like, and that's what it is. And I'm like, and the best thing about it is that the re I'm the, what I've said to myself was like, those videos, the selling point is that they, it is what it is. Whereas on the main channel, I'm like, it isn't what it is. It's got to be a transformed version of what we've made into something funny. Whereas on the second channel, I'm like, that video that I recorded is the video. Mm. And that mindset, for YouTube breaks down like a million barriers. Yeah. Whereas when you're sat there being like, how do I crush this? How do I take stuff out? How do I, you know, whereas the second time I'm like, ah, uh, you know, the whole appeal is that it's just what I filmed. And, um, I've been enjoying that a lot because it's just like being able to, you get all the perks with none of the downsides. Yeah. So it's been great, but, um, that's been a, a, a decently long podcast this week. Um, thank you very much for coming on, Arthur. Thanks as always, me. thank you guys for, for watching. We're back in the studio again, as you can see. Um, and hopefully we'll be back in the studio again next week. We'll see. Um, uh, George Clark is in Japan. A lot of the boys have been away and stuff. Mm. I mean, you just got back from Norway. I did. So there's been a lot going on. But um, appreciate it nonetheless. Thank you for watching this episode. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you do want to support, 
the podcast. Uh, Patreon is greatly appreciated. Help keep the lights on here. Uh, it means a lot. And um, subscribe. Episodes every week. We'll see you guys next time. Bye for now. Peace.